Hi, it's Anne from The Useless Crafter. So I know I usually don't do videos with my heat press, so it's a little bit big. So I know it's kind of crazy, my desk looks cluttered, but we're gonna do a lot of fun stuff today. Um, so before we get started though, if you're not subscribed already, please do so that you get your notifications for when a video comes out. All right, that's it. <laughs> okay, so I'm doing a bunch of shirts. It's for the Dapple Gray Cheerleaders. They're doing a Save the Seals Day. So we did, I designed this in Canva. I absolutely love Canva. Um, if you follow me, then you know that I'm not very good at actually designing stuff, but, but Canva is so easy that you can just plop things in. Um, it's just a super easy app to use. And I love like how I don't know, this feels really professional for me. <laughs> so um, anyway, I love using the sublimation printer because, I mean, look at the offset, the design that you get, the colors that you get, and it's very bright. You print it out, and then I'm gonna show you what it looks like, print it out, and then how to, how to press it. Um, I am using the heat press today because originally I did a reel and I used my Cricut Easy Press 2. And it's the big one. It was the 12 by 10, I believe, that I used in my reel. And so I put it down. And, you know, the way they told us is that it's a heavy machine. So it's balanced. It's better than an iron, which I totally get. I, I don't disagree with the fact that it's better than an iron because the space is bigger, right? It's 12 by 10. For sublimation or infusible ink, you need the iron or the whatever heat mechanism that you use um, it needs to be big enough that you press it at one time because the ink the color of the ink on your shirt or whatever blank you end up using is determined by the color you use the the temperature um, and the pressure so it would be really hard to replicate the same amount of pressure and time that it gets in order to have the same color. So if that makes sense, like if I was only able to press half this shirt, you would have to press this half of the shirt with the same exact time and pressure in order to get the same color of ink onto your shirt. So you can see why that using an iron would be really difficult. However, I thought using the Cricut Easy Press 2 would be easy because you just put it down. It's a big machine, right? It should apply even pressure, but it did not. So what happened was when I put it down, and I wish I had the shirt, but I may have thrown it away because it was, it did not come out well. The word save was like a lighter blue. When I looked at what was left on my ink sheet, which give me a second, I have, oh, here it is. So this is before you press it. Um, before you press it, the colors are always lighter. With the heat, it becomes dark. So once we press this onto the shirt with the heat, it comes out this color. But um, this sheet, after you heat it and, you, and it's done, when you look at it, if it didn't apply all the ink, the ink is still left on the sheet of paper. So what happened was save was really light. When I looked at the sheet, the color was still left on here. It did not get the same amount of pressure on this side of the shirt, which is kind of crazy because it's a 12 by 10 heat press. So anyway, um, I realized that with infusible or infusible ink or sublimation ink, um, I'm going to use my heat press. So I've already pressed a few and you can see here are the ones that I press. It is consistent. I mean, that's what I love about it. It's consistently beautiful. <laughs> Here's shirt number three, number four, five. So five shirts that came out exactly the way that they're supposed to. So that's what we're going to do today. So I have this heating up right now. I know you can't see the temperature. The temperature is at, um, it's set for 400, I believe and for 55 seconds because it gave me a range between 45 and 60 seconds so i went with 55 and so far with these it worked okay so let's prep the shirts so that you can kind of just you know set up like a process right kind of like an assembly line so these i've already done i did a reel because i wanted to show it i absolutely love it all right so we talked about canva right so i love canva so here are all my shirts um, next thing is 
So I kind of set up like three, three at a time because with three, what you want to do is with sublimation printing or pressing, um, it's the ink, right? So I always have a card sheet or a cardstock sheet in between, like inside the shirt, so that the ink doesn't bleed through to the bottom of the shirt, just in case, right? Then you wanna make sure that with sublimation, because the ink goes, it's kinda of like seeping into the shirt, you really need to make sure that there's nothing on the shirt, because if there is, the ink's not, the ink's gonna be missed. Let's say you have a piece of hair, okay? Because that's the easiest example that I can think of. My hair. It's super long, right? Let's say it comes through right here. If the hair stays on there, and I put this down, where the hair is, no ink will transfer through. So you would have a line of white where my hair would be. So you don't want that. And obviously, a long piece of hair like that would be so noticeable, right? But, you know, we have a lot of blue in this. Um, I feel like a piece of lint would, you know, cause like the C, for instance, to not really show through. Now, also, if you're looking at this and you're wondering why it is a mirror image, it needs to be because the ink needs to be touching the shirt. So when it comes down, it will read properly. So you do need to mirror your image. All right. So, you know, you want to do this. Then you want to um, preheat the shirt for like five seconds and then we're gonna line up the shirt. Now, when you're doing a lot of shirts, or even if you're doing one, but really, when you're doing a lot of shirts, you want to be consistent, right? So, let me show you what I am using. I teamed up with Simply Stocked. So these, I mean, I've never used it before, and I used to kind of just eyeball it, but after using this, it is so much easier to do this. So anyway, for $8 <laughs> on my Amazon shop, you can get all the templates. And um, so you can see there's infant, toddler, youth, and adult. So today I'm gonna be using the youth one. Um, I like it just because I, now I don't have to think about it. It goes right where the, um, the neckline is, and then center, and then I put my thing. Now with this one, because the is right in the middle, it's really easy for me to line up. So I'm gonna put it here. I don't think that you can see through. A little bit you can, right? But anyway, so I want the is in the middle, so I want my H kind of be in the middle right there. And then I'm going to tape it down. You wanna use heat resistant tape, and I'm gonna tape it where there's no ink. So for instance, I can tape it right here because where there is ink, it's heat resistant tape. You're then, if you put it over your design, wherever your tape is, it's blocking some of that heat coming through. So you would get discoloration, which I, duh, right? It makes sense, but I never really thought about it. Um, so don't make the mistake that I've made. <laughs> so, all right, this is still heating up. Um, so let's prep the other shirts while we're doing it. So I'm gonna move this aside. I'm gonna keep the youth one, move the other ones aside, and let's put in the cardstock for these shirts. So I'm gonna do three with you guys today, and then I'll finish the rest to get to my 13 um, this weekend. So let's see. Now with the designs as well, because it's the empty space is white and it's going on a white shirt. Technically, you don't need to cut this, but I like to cut it only because I want, when I use my little grid, I want my H to like easily line up and then I'll tape it down. So you don't have to, this is totally personal preference, but I'm gonna cut two more just so that you can see. And also because with my camera and how much is showing, I want you to be able to see my whole shirt. So I'm gonna cut it. So I'm saying it's for you, but really it's for me. I, I did I did a few because, you know, I did the five, right? I did a few without cutting and I just um, felt like the cutting made it a little bit easier for me. One less thing for, for it to catch onto something and move. So that's all. And then you can see, there was more room. I could have printed other things on here because I skipped design space. I printed straight from Canva. 
um, because this is just a simple design that I'm cutting. You can see I'm not cutting around the letters. It's going on as one press. Um, I could have printed something else to save the paper, but I had nothing else. But um, by skipping design space, I could have used all that empty space on something else, right? Um, and because you're limited to 6.75 inches by nine and a quarter. So it's limiting. If you don't need to use it, you can just bypass it, like I said, and that way you have more space. All right, so this is all done. Well, the two that we're, the three that we're gonna do, right? So I have one, two, three. And then this shirt already has the cardstock in between. So I'm gonna do it for two more shirts because we're gonna press three together and you can see that the three are gonna come out perfectly, even though I feel like I'm jinxing myself right now by saying that. All right, so here's my large shirt. I'm going to put it down here so you can see there's nothing crazy about no tips or anything like that. You're just sticking a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock in and I'm just scooting it in like this. And then I don't know if you can really see what's going on here. So this is my heat press, the top of my heat press. These are little magnets that are sitting on top of it. It's holding my Teflon sheet. So there's always a Teflon sheet there. Um, so yeah, that's my little tip for that. <laughs> All right, so here's the second one. And then I'm gonna get my third shirt and then we're gonna start pressing and hopefully everything gets done at the same time. All right, so I have my third shirt here. I'm stick my card stock in between. Now, I do recommend the Teflon sheet. I love it, especially for dark colored stuff. I mean, I know for sublimation, we need to go with the lighter colors, otherwise you're not gonna see the ink on there. But um, like when you're pressing a red shirt or a black shirt or dark blue, I always find that you get your, your iron marks or whatever, your heat press marks. With the Teflon sheet, you, you don't so I always have a Teflon sheet around okay so it's at 370 I know it's so close and I feel like I want to get started so let's um let's get the lint brush okay so this is clean I'm gonna move this aside let me move this over okay so I'm gonna move this over, hopefully you can see, yep, you can see the whole thing, perfect. So I'm gonna lay down the shirt. And normally, I don't know if you can tell, but my card sheet, my cardstock sheet is kind of crooked, but I don't care because I have my little ruler and I don't need everything to line up perfectly. So I'm gonna put down my shirt, I'm gonna put down the H so it lines up right at the center. Then I have my heat resistant uh, tape and I'm gonna tape it down right here. Then I'm gonna move this out of the way. Roll this back. All right, so we're gonna press for 55 seconds. I'm gonna push it down and the timer starts. Now, if, you've, if you don't have a heat press, the first time that you push it down, there's so much pressure clamping down on your shirt or your blank and your and the print um the print design so you just know it's good you can feel the pressure as you push it down it has like that extra oomph that you feel at the end so i'm definitely a fan of this i know it's not it for me it's not convenient because i have a spot for it uh sort of right because it's kind of big and it needs to have room to move it, to swing it around. So from a video standpoint, it's definitely hard. But even if I wasn't, you know, recording this, um, where I normally have it, it's not a good spot because I can't rotate. Oh, that was fast. Okay, so I'm gonna lift it up, move this aside so that you can see it, okay? Oh no. Oh, that was my fault. 
you see how the cheerleaders it was kind of dangling over i wasn't paying attention but i mean it's still okay but you can see why and then also <laughs> i did it on purpose um i did it but um you can see this part the ink is still left on there so that's what i mean when when you look at your residual you can see what's left on there. So definitely the C-H-E-E -E was kind of left off. So uh, I'm bummed I made the mistake, but everything else pressed evenly. Um, but it was a good mistake to make because now you guys can see it. All right, I'm gonna put this back. Let's do the next one more perfectly. <laughs> All right, so I'm just pulling the cardstock out. I'm gonna put this aside. Oh, I'm so bummed. But it's a good learning experience, right? Because, I mean, you can definitely see it here. That didn't... Oh, what a bummer. Okay. <laughs> so on this one, let's do the lint brush, right? Okay, I'm going to move this over really quickly. So I'm going to lift it up high enough so that right here, the whole design is going to be on there. Okay, let's, oh, yeah, let's press it for a little bit, pre-press for a couple seconds. And then we'll get back to talking about, you know, the whole heat press being kind of big. But it's, you can't beat, you know, just the pressure and the, the quality, right? Like where you're always going to get the same results if you do it right okay here's my here's my sheet right my h is gonna go down right there and this time you see this is where it's it's bending over it will have enough space to get the pressure um, move this aside move this back and we're gonna press and then talk about how big it is all right so yeah, the Yeezy Press is so nice because, you know, I just stick it in one of my drawers in the back, pull it out. It's nice and small and petite, um, but it doesn't, the pressure comes from you. So you would have to push down on it. Even if you decided to not push down on it and you wanted even pressure, I had that problem. And then also, because I'm doing this whole cheer thing in general, I was doing cheer bows and the mask as well. So I was using the mini um, and also with, with the bows, I took out, took out all three machines. I had a mini, a six by seven, and a 12 by 10 because I was trying to do a lot all at one time. And the 12 by 10 was too big, so it kind of, you know, on my bow, it was a little bit off balance. So then it didn't get the even pressure again. So it's like, you just gotta be careful and think about what kind of project you have. All right, perfection this time, right? And look, here's the comparison between the two. Oops, no, wrong one. Here we go. Yeah. You can see all the color left from this from this piece because it all transferred onto the shirt, right? It transferred onto the shirt beautifully, but on this one, you can see the ink that's still left behind. All right, so let's move this off. We're gonna do our last one. And so you can see it can be fast if you set it all up like in a little assembly line, like all your pieces are cut, uh, you know, your design's cut and ready to go. Your card stock is already inside the shirt. Okay, so I'm gonna pull this aside, put this down. There we go. Now, I do prefer this one where you, you know, clamp down as opposed to the one that goes like this. Um, the clamshell, I guess, and only because the clamshell, every time I watch somebody, oh, did I not press the timer? I didn't press the timer. Um, I get really nervous about accidentally, like there's not enough space to move your hand and to get your design in. So that's personal preference. But, um, you know, I work with Poly Tape and they're amazing. They're always like teaching me stuff. She also said that when you do one of these, sometimes because of the way it clamps down, there's a little movement 
in the design. So this one comes down, the whole um, lid comes down straight, right? So the pressure is like all at the same time, whereas this comes down, there's pressure starting here first, like at the where it's attached. So just something to consider if you're thinking about buying. Um, that's that wasn't why I went with this one. This one was purely because I didn't want to burn myself. But um, another really good reason. All right, so I'm gonna turn that one off. I'm gonna take this. Oh my god, what is wrong with me? Holy, I pressed it without anything. Oh my gosh, I was not even thinking about that. I didn't put down my. That's what happens when you do more than one thing at one time <laughs> all right let me get my where's my youth oh, gosh i don't even know what to say about myself right now that was supposed to be like a five second press and it was like a whole minute and that's why i didn't turn on the timer because it was supposed to be a mini press oh my gosh you must love me. <laughs> All right, here is my thing this time. And this time around, I'm gonna put it on top right here, but I don't wanna burn this thing because it's gotten so much heat. So give me a second. I'm gonna put a whole thing of butcher paper. Just to be extra. All right, here we go. Good one, huh? <laughs> um, so things that uh, happen, yeah. So luckily nothing happened to the shirt. Um, I did have the Teflon sheet, so it just got like a lot of heat. Um, but we'll see what it looks like now, if it makes any difference at all. Um, okay, so I do have for this, if you go to my Instagram, and also on my Amazon, I do have a code for an extra 15% off. It's only $8 to begin with. So I definitely think it's a it's a good buy, but um, an extra 15% off if you go to, um, oh, I'll post the code in my YouTube. Um, and that's it. So let's look at this and then let me know what else you wanna see. I have a, a lot of sublimation projects coming up that I will post. The, the cheer bows, um, the shirt, of course, and then what else did I have? There was one more thing. Oh, the masks. So, all right, let's look at this. Ta-da, looks amazing. All right, I will see you next time. Let me know what you want to see. And thanks, I will talk to you later.